Okay. Hello and welcome everyone. Uh, this is another attempt to start the recording. This is Dmitry, Network Programmability Lab Stream. So I already discussed some part just before the stream. So not to repeat myself, I will just uh, jump right into announcements for this week and then we will continue with the uh, agenda for today. So a couple of announcements. Uh, my vacation has ended, I was off for two weeks. So we didn't have stream last week, uh, but now I, I returned yesterday. So today we are back on track. So during my vacation, I did a couple of interesting things that I would like to talk about on the stream today. Uh, so I started contributing to Nornir um, Biscot uh, and was working closely with David, David Burrows and Kirk Byers. Um, a lot of great discussion and those are really great guys to work with and I'm really excited to be able to give, get, be, give back to community. Um, so I really like the project and yeah, so it seems like contributing the code is uh, uh, the next, next um, step. So actually before I have never contributed to any other open source project like on on the like constant basis but this one i think i'm going to stick around for quite a while uh, mainly because i'm migrating some of my work projects um, to it as well so it's important for me as well that you know it has all the features we need it for the project um, so another thing that I did was I almost finished the article about studying new technology in IT. So actually, I started writing about different stuff. I was started writing about how you can get started with Python. But you know, I started doing that, and I realized after like a couple of hours that before explaining that stuff I had some other thoughts that I would like to cover about how you get started with any kind of ID technology and how you, you should start learning anything in IT so um, those are kind of like study tips things that are important to uh, to do and keep in mind while you are um, learning something new in IT uh, it is almost done. However, I don't like some parts of it right now. So, uh, so I, I need to you know have another go at it and just correct the stuff that I don't like and then publish it. But the, it's it's from my perspective, it's ninety percent done. Um, so also during my vacation, I was uh, playing with Django and Django REST framework. I was already doing Django before in my life. And this was kind of like um, repetition plus, you know, I was exploring some, some new stuff and um, it was very satisfying experience. So I, I really like Django and even though it it has some learning curve and it poses some boundaries on how you, how you write your web uh, backend, I still really like it and I feel like a lot of decisions were uh, very logical so it was very pleasant and satisfying experience for me so I'm going to, to do more Django in the future actually I'm thinking that for one of the streams probably in one or two weeks we are going to have a stream specifically about web development and network automation so I was thinking something like uh, let's create you know some very simple web portal where you could like press a button and then it will go ahead and do some command on the device or and then get output from from devices and then return it back on the web page. Uh, kind of like a nice nice ish GUI for your command line Python script. Um, so we are we are probably going to do that in a couple of weeks. Another thing that I was doing was I started learning the JavaScript. So, um, so um, I am I'm not ex I don't extremely like front end web development, um, but I realized that I need it. You know, 
for a lot of stuff that I'm doing at work, I'm I'm doing almost everything starting from um, system design and architecture of the application down to the actual development. Uh, so while I'm good, at, I think I'm okay with back end, but I'm not extremely good at um, front end, and I actually hate it when I have to do it. But I just had to start learning JavaScript. So um, I must say that my experience was better than it was last time, which was I think a couple of years back when I was trying to do the same thing. Um, so now that you know the like uh, there are new standards for JavaScript, new features like uh, ECMAScript six, ECMA, ECMAScript seven. Uh, that are supported in majority of browsers and there are so many great features that makes development much smoother and better you know like even stuff like string formatting so previously in, in um, JavaScript you had to use plus operator to con concatenate variables and strings together now you actually have uh, like how they call it, literal, a literal expression or something like this, where you can actually substitute like in, like F strings in Python. So stuff like this, error functions, and a lot of other stuff makes writing in JavaScript much less painful than it was a couple of years back. So I actually started enjoying it. I don't think I, it will ever become my primary programming language, but, but it's not as painful, so that's that's a good sign, right? Uh, there are a couple of questions or comments in the chat. Let me let me check it out. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I have my own definition of vacation, so yeah. As I said, I'm still planning for some completely off of uh, you know vacation completely off the grid probably in September, um, where I will not take my laptop with me and anything like this. And that vacation will be completely without technology um, and without learning any new stuff. Uh, another news, which is a little bit sad, but it's not that bad. <laughs> so my CCARS got suspended two days ago. So I let it expire. I didn't, I didn't recertify, uh, so I still have one year to recertify it if I want to. Um, most probably I will do it just to keep pass uh, for, for CCE party at Cisco Life, but um, I do realize that now I have a little bit different priorities, uh, so it's... Um, uh, so, you know, I kind of like lost some motivation to do it, um, but that's okay. So, yeah, I think I will do continuous education sometime later this year and uh, renew it. Another news is that I got Distinguished uh, Speaker Award for Cisco Life US presentation. Uh, so I'm really excited about it, but to be honest, uh, it was due to my colleague uh, we had a session together with him. He was a main speaker. I was mostly a proctor, uh, but you know, due to his effort and a little bit of mine contribution, both of us got distinguished speaker. Um, so, uh, yeah, thank you very much to everyone who supported us during the session. It's uh, very exciting to get an award like this. Um, maybe in the future I will get one of those rewards for this session that was 100% mine, but meanwhile, it's also very nice to um, to receive a reward, even though the main speaker was someone else. Um, so kudos to my colleague Wojtek, who made it happen. And I'm um, looking forward to net next Cisco Lives. Uh, and the last announcement for today is that I submitted two new talks for Cisco Life Europe among some other older talks that I had. So one of them will be Damnet Workshop uh, about Nornir 
And another one will be about my biggest um, network automation project at Cisco. Um, I do not know if, if any of those will get accepted. We'll see in a couple of months, but I do hope they will be because I'm, I'm really looking forward to share some of my stuff that I'm, I'm doing, especially on this project that I'm working on uh, because I can't really share um, every every detail here on the stream because it's our eternal stuff but on somewhere like on Cisco life I can actually uh, I can actually do that oh thank you very much mentor Z I really appreciate it um, okay so that that's it uh, this announcement for this week it took like, around 11 minutes or so uh, let's move to the topic of for today uh, which is migrating lab management system uh, from Ansible to Nornia. The prototype of this lab management system was written live on the stream in part 11. Uh, if you are curious about that, go, go to my YouTube channel and check it out. There is a demo, well, there is a process of writing it on in part 11 and there is a demo of it in part 12. Um, probably um, if you follow me on LinkedIn, uh, there, there are links to those sessions, even with time codes, so we can go ahead and check out um, how it was built and how it is working. We are going today to migrate that project because it's using Ansible to Narnia. Um We'll see how far we will go today. Um, I'm not 100% sure. It's whenever I think it will take um, one hour, it usually takes 10. So. Um, I will not even make any forecast. Uh, we'll just see how it goes. Um, as usual, uh, if if you are watching this uh, stream uh, as a recording, please keep in mind that this is not a course. This is uh, this is a stream. So this uh, content is stream first, and um, it it should not really be perceived as like formal courts or some you know some teaching it's just i am sharing my journey with you guys uh and um and yeah like just don't perceive it as a course because you know every so often there are some comments that oh but it's it's too long or something like this i i would like to have a short version of it or something like this um, I'm not saying that there will never be some kind of like short snippet like you know like some 15 minute summary of like a couple of streams but for now this is not what's going to happen all of the streams are just recordings of what is happening in life there is absolutely no editing so please don't expect me to change the format of what I'm posting on YouTube as of now uh, with that, let's get uh, uh, right into the project. Um, let me know, guys, if you have any questions um, or comments in the chat. As always, I will keep an eye on it. Um, okay, so um, as you notice, prob is you probably notice uh, we had some delay today. I wanted to start at 20 minutes up past 6, but we, we couldn't get it done mainly because, as usual, I discovered that there are some problems with my lab environment, which I had to start fixing, um, which is not always fun, I must tell you that. Um, uh, so. Let me go to Genet 3. So this is my lab. Uh, I will briefly describe to you what this lab system is uh, is doing or was doing before I broke the lab. Uh, so um, I have a couple of devices, well, a bunch of devices, around 10. Uh, those are routers and switches mostly. And these devices play different roles here. So uh, imagine that these four devices on the top, which are labeled R1, Switch 1, R3, Switch 3, 
and these four devices at the bottom which are labeled R2, uh, Switch 2, R4, Switch 4 those are what we call a pod gear okay so uh, so the whole idea is that those are devices you know what I start describing you details without actually explaining the like the high level idea about what it is so let me back uh, let me start from from the beginning so the whole idea of uh, something that you see on the screen is that we would like to have a bunch of gear connected to the infrastructure um, so you have a bunch of gear it can be routers, switches, firewalls it can be different vendors, whatever that is it is connected somehow to your infrastructure in this case we are connecting the gear with like a like a bunch of just you know Ethernet cables to infrastructure and then based on this connection and the automation that you built around it you can create any kind of overlay topologies on top of this gear so for example in this case I have these four devices on the top and these four devices on the bottom those are pod gear pod routers and pod switches and I have my infrastructure switches in the middle, those I call matrix switches. So, and imagine that I would like to build some kind of topology and let's say I have topology one, which is just connection of two routers, okay, with a single link. So somehow I declare this topology in some kind of format. Maybe it will be even web GUI maybe it, for now it's just a text file with some kind with just you know a couple of links um, and I say okay I would like to have this router connected to that router so what this management system is doing it it goes ahead it takes it takes your lab template it takes your uh, settings like I would like to deploy one instance of this lab or ten instances of this lab it takes your lab template and your actual deployment settings and then figures out what it should do on the backend in the infrastructure to make it happen okay so think about think about this um, from this perspective so I have here router 1 and router 2 okay let's say my lab template says I would like this two router one to be directly connected to router two. Okay, uh, this is my lab topology. So lab management system, what it does, it figures out. Okay, you would like to connect these two routers with a single link. I know that f for for router one I have four links, and for router two I have four links connected. So I'm going to go ahead and configure a tunnel here on one link going to router 1 and on another link going to router 2 in this case we are using Q and Q tunnels so I'm going to assign a specific VLAN number uh, for Q and Q and I'm going to tunnel uh, to create a tunnel so when you like do something like show CDP neighbors on R1 uh, those it will see router 2 as direct con directly connected neighbor so in this way you can actually connect any uh, any pair of devices you want you can connect like router 1 to router 4 so by creating a q and q tunnel across the matrix switches right here where you will create you will assign one vlan here uh, to router 1 another vlan here to router 4 you will have trunks here in the middle and the traffic will be basically tunneled so our router one will see router four as a directly connected neighbor so this is a whole idea about about this particular part of this lab management system um, and we already built a prototype of it um, using ansible on the first nonlinear stream i think it was two streams back i discussed um, in more details like my motivation um, why I don't really like Ansible and it doesn't really solve majority of my problems. So I decided that, okay, this project is going to be migrated to Nornir 
because it gives me much more flexibility and because of some other reasons. Um, because I already covered it before, I'm not, I don't want to, you know, to have a lot of repetition. So if you're curious, just go back to Nornier stream and there is a, like, I think 15 minute section describing how Ansible and Nornier are different. Uh, so this is the whole idea. And I see there was a question, sorry, mentor, the, uh, uh, I wanted to finish this part. So are you using OBS Studio Lab to stream? Uh, just curious. I am using just OBS, uh, just, you know, uh, I don't use OBS Streamlabs or some other fork, I just use OBS. Uh, this is the only thing I'm using. And as you see, I don't have a lot of effects here. I don't have a lot of editing. Unfortunately, I don't really know how to do all of that. And I also don't have a lot of time to do that as well, to like edit three hour, uh, three hour long stream. Uh, let me know if you have any other questions. I will, I will gladly answer those. Okay, so uh, this is what we had. Let me very quickly go through the like stuff and files that we had before. So uh, this this is Ansible inventory. So if you see here, I have a bunch of uh, pod routers. I have pod switches where I basically define their host names and their IP addresses for management. Okay. And then I have my infrastructure, which contains matrix switches, and I have a couple of uh, matrix switches here as well. Now, uh, I was talking about the, uh, the lab templates, and I was talking about what we call deployments. So uh, if you look on this folder called user data, I have lab templates. And I have a couple of lab templates. One of them was called dev. Uh, and this template template dev contains key, key connections and it says um, I have a lab template where I will have a lab host name brew r1 and on port 11 I'm going to connect it to another device so if you can if you will think about this topology this is something like uh, give me a second. Ah, this is unfortunate because I forgot to install to install driver for my Mac uh, to do this drawing. Um, let me see if we have some alternatives. Maybe maybe I can do this on here. Draw the net. No. Um, Damn it, how this project is called? You know what guys, I have never used this before. So, <laughs> I don't think it will be a very great idea to do it live. I just heard about this project, but I have never used this. No, I don't think I will use this. It will take forever. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to try to draw it maybe with my mouse. Uh, so, so here is my one topology. where I say I have my router brew r1 and I have another router brew r2 and they are connected on the port e11 on both sides so this is one of my topologies however I can deploy several instances of this topology. For example, I have four routers, so I can actually deploy 
two instances of this topology on uh, on uh, on this infrastructure. So how this is going to be described? So we have here uh, another thing called deployments, where I have I have let's let me show you this one mixed one dev where I have deployment name, this is just you know human friendly name. And then I have devices section where I map every single device in my infrastructure to it to its labs lab host name and pod number. And then pod number is basically pod number and the lab template that's going to be used. So if you think about it, this particular file says I will have two pods. One will be pod 100, another pod will be 200. Pod number 200 is going to be dev. This one that we just uh, we were just looking at. For this lab template dev, if you look on the file on the routers or switches that are used by uh, by this pod number you'll see that there is router 3, which is mapped to brew R1, and there is router 4, which is named to, uh, which is mapped to brew R2. So this is where we have this mapping of the physical devices to your lab host name, uh, because you may have multiple devices that have brew R1, but they obviously will be different devices in your lab topology. So I had one topology where there were just two routers, and then there is mixed topology, where you have, uh, where is it, mixed. Uh, here you have mixed topology where you also have connections and this one is a little bit different. This one, so this one was dev, this one is mixed. Uh, and if I remember correctly, so it has uh, something like this, SJBR1 then it's connected to SJ switch one, DSW one, then it's connected to DSW two, and then it's connected to SJBR two. And then there were connections like this. Uh, And then, I, um, then also, so this is what this file describes. It describes connections. And then also I had a folder called configs. So you can provide a initial configuration for your lab. So, and then I had configuration for routers and for those switches. So they create basically a couple of interfaces. There are a couple of VLANs going on here across this infra and so on and so forth. Uh, pretty straightforward. So then I had deployment called two mixed, where I have two pods, uh, 100 and 101, they're referring to lab template mixed. And then I have a mapping of my physical devices here. When I say physical, in this particular case, they're not physical, they are virtual in Gen 3, but they can also be physical. So I map my devices that I actually have, router 1, router 2, router 3, router 4, uh, two devices um, like they're named in the lab. So router 1 will, be, will have a role of SJBR1, but then router 3 will also have a role of SJBR1, but in different pod, if that makes any sense. Uh, so this is briefly about the project. Again, if you would like to know more about how it works uh, and so on, go back to the, to I think it was part 12 where I have a demo. I think it's like 30 minutes demo describing all that. The focus of today is do all of the same stuff in one year. Uh, so to do this in Ansible, besides doing this, I had quite complicated playbook I had uh, I had a custom action pl plugin written in Python here. I had Wars plugin uh, 
to load my topologies dynamically um, and so on and so forth. It was an extremely great experience, I must tell you that. Um, so, yeah, we are going to migrate all of that to Nornir. So let's get started. Um, so, I also was using pip n for quite a while, but uh, since recently I hate two more than I like it, so I'm evaluating uh, alternatives like poetry, uh, which can do pa Python packaging and dependency management. Uh, I really like API, but unfortunately doesn't solve all of my use cases, especially for this live stream. Um, and I'm also thinking about some other tools. So specifically for this stream, we are going to fall back just to using virtual environment plus, uh, plus um, just pip and requirements txt manually. Um, maybe f on some other stream, I will show you some other tools, but this is what it is for today. So I have my project here. I have my projects, public network programmability lab. Uh, I have my, um, I have my folder for Nornir and I created a folder for a lab system right here. Uh, so we are almost ready. So uh, I need to create a virtual environment here. So let me do that. <coughs> so let me see which Python I'm using right now. Okay, Python 3.7. Okay, so let's do Python 3 minus M vnf uh, dot vnf. Uh, and then I'm also going to uh, redo my requirements txt a little bit. I'm going to unpin all of these dependencies here um, and install the latest versions. And there is also Ansible. Yeah, I think this, this is all right. So I need to activate my virtual environment. I need to say source VN pin activate. And now I also need to say pip install minus r requirements txt. And we will also need to install Nornir, but I'm going to install um, I'm going to install unofficial version of Nornir uh, directly from development branch because there are a couple of features that I really like, and they will be eventually released. But while they're not, um, I'm going to just you know go ahead and install it directly from Git. So let me go ahead to Nornir. So I'm going to install the uh, branch called 2.0. It contains some cool stuff uh, like filters. So to do that, well, first I have to wait until this and uh, this uh, finishes. While it's doing its thing, I'm also I also need to fix uh, some problems with my lab. So um, I had here my routers where I set up, where I set up my, uh, my um, SSH connection to it from my management server. So if I do show run a uh, username, there is admin admin and there is, there are some SSH set settings and management IP address, I think. Mm, yep, it's right here. So I should be able to say SSH there. Yes, admin 
then I can go ahead and SSH to uh, to routers. This one is uh, working. I didn't do anything for switches, so they came up empty. I will need to do similar setting there as well. Uh, let me see if my Ansible installation was successful. It actually was. Yeah, but by the way, um, the pip got new versioning scheme. So now it jumped from version 10 to version 18. So, uh, this can be quite confusing if you see something like this, but you know, just keep this in mind. They, ju they just changed um, how they version the project, so now they're using calendar-based versioning. So yeah, just keep this in mind. I'm upgrading pip here, and now I also need to install. Uh, to install Nornir directly from the GitHub for specific branch. So the way you do this is uh, using pip install uh, and then git plus https at and the branch name. So the branch name is 2.0. So that's pretty much it. Um, yep. And it seems it worked worked out fine uh, let me see so the way I can check this if I do well if I do Python I'll import Nornir uh, Nornir underscore underscore version uh, oh yeah I think we, that I think it, let me see I don't think the version got bumped here yet. Yeah, so the version was not bumped uh, yet. So yeah, this is kind of expected. But the way I can check this, if I can go ahead and say from Nornir core filter import F. And this is new filter object, which is super amazing in Nornir 2.0. Um, called F filter. Um, check out the pull request, which is pull request closed and where is this? Uh, filter. Filter object, this one. So with this PR there was uh, there was uh, basically a, a lot of cool stuff. You specify F has like parents group or something like this, and it just works. Uh, so you can filter on a bunch of attributes, on groups, on host names, on anything you want. Um, pretty cool stuff. That's actually the main reason why I'm using the development version of Normier here in the stream. So this seems to work just fine. Um, Okay, so yeah, I installed this just fine. I have to fix my management access for uh, the rest of the switches. Um, let me double check. The I'm checking the IP address that I have to use. So switch one to four is reduce 111 through 14. Okay, so switch one. Um, 111 and I have to apply it here okay switch to same thing Switch three. Okay. Switch four. Okay. 
So uh, this config is the only thing it's doing. It's creating management VRF, default username and password, static IP address uh, for the management, uh, for the management interface, default route in management VRF, um, and basically SSH config. That's the only thing this is doing. So. Uh, just to make sure this is working, I should be able to ping 192.168.112.11, which I can, and I should be able to SSH, uh, SSH to admin, which I can. So I can SSH to switch one, and I have to repeat the same thing for uh, for matrix one through matrix four and then we will be done with preparing the lab environment okay, matrix one is done matrix two okay matrix three Awesome, and then matrix four, and then we should be done. Okay, so uh, let me also try one of the matrix switches. Let's say this one. Okay, this works just fine. Uh, I, s I think I saved config everywhere as well, so this should not be an issue. Okay, so that now on every device, basically, I have. I have a management um, management access. Let me see if there are any questions in the chat. It seems fine. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so I think we are pretty much done with preparing environment. There is one last step that I want to do. Uh, I want to re-upload on my lab server. There is a quiet mess now. Um, I need to... Um, delete everything there and I want to upload everything if I will find a button deployment up upload okay yeah so let me see if this is working uh, Actually, it doesn't. Oops. No, it actually does. Okay. Everything is being uploaded now. Perfect. Okay. So, where should we start? Well, I was thinking there are a couple like ways to really approach this kind of migration. For example, uh, in Nornir there is a plugin. Uh, there is a plugin that um, that um, allows you to use Ansible inventory uh, if you don't like their way of representing the inventory. So I'm still kind of debating if I would like to keep Ansible inventory. I think just for the sake of the stream, I'm going to use that. Maybe we'll find some problems as well. So um, maybe not. I don't know, but. I think this is something that we could try and see if it, you know, if it's working. If not, you will recreate inventory specifically for Nornia. Uh, so what exactly I need to do to make that happen? So, um, well, I'm going to do this. I'm going to
first create appropriate uh, directory structures. So let's say first I will have inventory. Then in inventory I'm just going to move uh, these four th three things to the inventory. Uh, which I have. Okay, for exploring part I also want to take the config YAML or let's check this. I think we can use actual, excuse me, Ansible config. Move it here because uh, Narnier uses config YAML file. I'll rename it. So I have my inventory. I will definitely need the user data. I don't think well I can move it like this I can just move user data directly I guess um, user data okay. deployments lab templates blah 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 inventory okay so here is how I would start First, I would start with just checking if my inventory works. So, what do you need to do? Uh, you need to say inventory. You have to provide the path for our inventory file. I don't remember if we can just leave it as like just hosts or we have to specify the uh, the um, uh, <clears throat> extension let me try I don't I really don't recall okay so what else we are going to do I think for now we can start with this okay so let me also do this I'm going to I'm also going to uh, pip install I'm going to pip install IPython and IPDB. Okay, so now if I do IPython, uh, this doesn't work out so well did it let me see um oh okay no this worked just fine okay uh so let me f uh let me find out how to call Nornir because i always forget Okay, so I will need from Nornir core import import init Nornir. Okay. And then I will have let's say nr I will call the config.yaml. And now it yells at me that something is not right. Okay. So let me create a new file called Python. I don't want to call it no I will just call it main.py. So and let me also configure Python interpreter here as well. I don't know why this window didn't disappear. Um, I think I will need to reload. Um, yeah, I will need to reload my pie chart. Sorry, folks.
okay it doesn't yell at me anymore perfect so if name main main dev main From Nornir core import init Nornir. Uh, okay, so we will have Nornir NR, let's say NR, the Nornir init Nornir, and then you say config config YAML. Config YAML. Perfect. So, yep. Actually, you know what? I'm going to get rid of this part yet. Since I want to be able to interact directly in Python interpreter, it will be a little bit easier if I don't have the like normal Python Python ball boilerplate for its main. So. Let me do this again. I will have to exit and go to the correct directory. Um, so lab system. So IPython. Let's see. Okay, so this didn't crash. So that's a good sign. Uh, let's see. Uh, we have our inventory object. Yeah, hosts. Where I have my four hosts and let's say data. Object is no attribute date. Oh, okay. Um, let's do R1 items. Um, data. Let me see if, um, okay, so I, I have custom data for matrix switches. So matrix data. Okay, this didn't work so well, <laughs> did it? Okay, so, okay, I should actually open the bug for this. So hosts YAML got parsed successfully, but I don't think that these variables got parsed successfully. Okay, this is something to you know I should check out later. And maybe just go ahead and fix it myself. <laughs> um, okay, what is the group name? Let's say group matrix switches. Data. Ooh, okay. So somehow these Groups do not have any data. Hmm. Don't think this will work out, will it? Yeah, this didn't work out so well. Uh, let's see. So this doesn't really work. Hmm. I want to check one thing. I want to move this config YAML directly to the inventory and launch the same code directly from the inventory folder. Um,
Yeah, so somehow this data didn't get loaded. So that's extremely unfortunate, I must say, but I don't think it's like end of the world. Um, so this is definitely something that, you know, I should raise a bug for uh, and, and investigate, but not on the stream. So what we are going to do, uh, we are actually going to rebuild this as a simple inventory. Uh, we will keep some folders intact and then and then it should it should work the way I expect it to work. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to copy this folder and I will call it old. Um, let's do just to investigate. Okay, and now here I'm going to change the whole thing. So now this is going to be the um, uh, this is going to be um, nor near simple inventory. Okay. Do that I actually need to go back to their docs because I don't remember or I can use the some of their code actually I'm going to do that so it will be in test inventory data hosts okay so um, the different there are a couple of differences where you have here hosts as top level keys and then you list uh, immediate groups and then there is also group default, default where you specify like default stuff. Okay, so let's go ahead and do it. So we need to have a file in this format instead of fanciful format. Uh, okay, this shouldn't be that hard. So. You just say it's part of some group. In this case, it will be pod routers. And then I need to have, where is the IP address? Oops, I don't remember. Um, yeah, I will actually need to go for their docs. No near read the docs. Uh, 2.0 tutorials. Okay, here it is. No near underscore host. Okay. So Nornir underscore host will be 192.168.122.101. Uh, Nornir SSH port, we don't need that. Nornir username, we will specify it as a group variable. Uh, site, we don't need that. I think this is pretty much shit, except of Nornir NOS though. So for Nornir NOS, we will have to specify like, what did I do? Oops. Uh, we will have to specify Nornir NOS. Well, we can also specify it as default one. So we don't need that as well. Well, then that's pretty much it. So we have to replicate this uh, four times. And then we will have um, <clears throat> we will have switch one. Uh, like this and then this group will be put switches. Okay. Okay. 
so and now matrix so we'll have what, matrix minus one okay. and they have 15 and the group is called matrix switches Perfect. So we are almost done actually here. We will have to create um, we will have to create our groups.yaml. And okay, this A as well. So let me do that as well. Okay. And now I have to copy this into groups YAML. Oh, there is one additional thing that I have to do. I just remembered. Uh, I would like to have localhost. Localhost, which is nor near host. Um, and that's pretty much all oh, now we will need to have we'll need to have the group name I think nor near nos Linux let's put this even though it's Mac it doesn't really matter because we will need to have we will need to run some tasks locally like that have nothing to do with devices so it's important to have like some kind of placeholder device in Ansible, there is implicit uh, implicit local host that you can use, but here you have to specify everything explicitly. So um, this is what I'm doing. I'm adding local host here. It will not part of any group as well. Okay, so this was host YAML. I will need to have groups. Okay, I can also remove this part. Uh, and groups okay. groups.yaml defaults let's copy this part So, mm, nor near username admin, nor near password admin, nor near nos. Nor near os, nor near nos. I don't remember. Uh, ha, ha. can't find something that was that I yeah I don't remember anymore where it was there was a converter from mapping from like nor near nos to something and I don't remember where it is now
but it's pretty fine here, nor near the nose. And type. Okay. Good. Group wise, all. Let me see what is here. We don't care about. Well, actually, we care about this parameter though. This is one custom one that I defined. So I will need that. Okay. And we also need to specify a hierarchy of the groups. So you have to specify that pod routers and pod switches have a group pod gear. So the pod gear is part of the group. No, ah, no, it's incorrect. It's actually vice versa. Pod routers has groups um pod gear and pod switches has the same thing pod switches has the same thing you also have to specify pod gear group explicitly so you have to say pod gear Pod gear are uh, empty dictionary, or I think actually we can now specify like this. And uh, infra contains matrix switches, so we also need infra and then matrix matrix switches contains groups um, infra okay this is pretty much it there is just one more parameter and also I want to have two space in indentation. Okay, um, I have this parameter here. I also need matrix switches. This parameter here. Okay. This looks good to me. Okay, so I have my hosts here, nor near. Okay, part with host wars is still not defined. You'll have to load those at runtime. But group wires are covered now, so I can go ahead and delete those. We don't need them anymore. Um, and now I can actually uh, load simple inventory. Simple inventory and Let's see the code. Yeah, I'm sorry guys, I didn't look at chat at all. Watching a stream for a while, I wanted to ask how do you know if certain thing you install could be kernel kernel level driver? Like how do you spot kernel level drivers? Is there a program you can run on it? I am not 100% sure I know what you mean, I'm sorry. What do you mean by kernel, kernel level driver? Um, yeah, mentor is you got it right. <laughs> yeah, once I'm very focused on something, it's really hard to to uh, to get my attention. 
I apologize for that. Sorry, guys. Um, okay. I have to check the docs how I should specify it. I always forget all the stuff. Um, host file, hosts.yaml, groups file, groups.yaml. Uh, okay. I think we don't need anything else. Stuff like this will work, hopefully. Um, okay, so I expect that my inventory will will get will, uh, will get uh, propagated and loaded. I don't expect this host virus will work just yet. Uh, so let's go ahead and do this. Uh, I will actually, you know what? We will we will need we will need uh, parameters. Uh, we will definitely need them because I want to move host file and group file. I want to specify a folder inventory. Ah, uh, host yaml and. I want to say groups, group or groups. Group file is inventory groups. Jesus Christ, what is happening with my typing skills today? Um, okay. Whew, okay, this should work. Um, let me rename this one to config minus Ansible. And this one is going to no. This one is going to be moved to the root. Okay. Nap. Hey, thank you very much for following. Okay. So I have my config have my host file, group file, simple inventory, uh, inventory plugins specified. My two files are here. This config YAML is useless now. Uh, and my main py file, which doesn't matter at the moment because I just need to load, uh, to load this stuff. So uh, let me go ahead back to IPython and Oops, no, 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 no. I need to load config YAML. And it says I couldn't find it. Oh, right, because I'm again doing it from the wrong folder. Okay, so now inventory and our inventory uh, hosts. I again have all of my devices. If I specify R1, I have my R1. If I specify data, uh, I see some data. Now, I want to access default attribute, um, which I can. So you see now that I don't have here username anywhere here but it's part of the group's defaults and I typed dot username and it put put me here. Uh why <laughs> this is stupid. <laughs> why it says Junos I have no idea. Uh let's try I yes, I don't remember how it's called in the how it should be called. We should actually check this. Um, Napalm to NetMic map, SSH platform. Yeah, I think it's correct. It, it's just iOS. Okay. 
Um, okay, so I have username now. I'm very curious about my matrix switches. So I want to be sure is that I can access this parameter for matrix switches. Um, so I say matrix one, matrix one, and I say um, dot one q. Oh, I can use get. I think get dot one q tunnel vlan start okay and i can access it perfect uh so should be able to access groups as well i can access groups uh this one should also be available Which, I, uh, which is available, perfect, uh, great, so this part is done, like just you know basic, um, basic inventory, now the next part would be to actually add, uh, to actually add the Host wars, like for every specific matrix device, because those are not um, supported out of the box with simple inventory. You have to use one of the existing uh, existing tasks. And you know what? I'm also going to add, do the following. I'm going to uh, also open um, Nornir. Nor near in PyCharm, so I can always go ahead and look on the code since I'm doing some contribution to so I have some some stuff already here it will be just a little bit easier for me to reference the source code directly uh, so I can you know just just switch between those um, so okay so in order to use that we need to use You need to use one of the plugins. I think it was called tasks data load YAML and then you load YAML. And then you run it. Uh, okay. Okay, so let's, let's um, do it shouldn't be that hard um famous last words and there was some questions chat let me let me check it thank you very much mentor z4 as a help i yeah i don't deal with linux kernel at all so I had absolutely no clue. Um, okay. And I messed here a little bit with my variables. Okay. So let's go ahead and, uh, and actually write some code. Okay. So uh, basically, the first thing that I have to do, I have to load, load host wires for um, I'm going to change. <laughs> I'm going to say host underscore data. Hosts data. Let's put it this way. So NR Dornier, blah blah blah. Okay, so now I have to group. I have to for every single matrix uh, device. I have to go ahead and run a task which will load additional data uh, in um, in the variables. So for example, here if I do matrix one interfaces, this will not work. It says key error. 
Okay, so now we have to fix this because I need to be able to access these interfaces. How do I do that? So I have to first filter. Let's do this matrix. Matrix. Um, I can say matrix switches. I have to say NR filter or is it inventory filter? It's inventory filter. And now I will have to use F object. So from Nornier core import filter import F. So F uh, and it says has parent group is equal to mm, matrix switches. And for now, we will just uh, put a breakpoint here. Okay. So if I say, okay, I have to source my virtual environment again. Source uh, bn bin activate. Ah, uh, damn it. Okay, and then Nornier lab system. I have to say Python main by. This didn't work out so well, did it? Something is wrong. Okay. Oh, I am an idiot because it should be config, you know. Okay. Now we are getting directly to the uh, to the Python debugger. Uh, now I should be able to access matrix switches, and I say inventory hosts. Okay. Matrix switches dot hosts. And here I have only my four matrix switches. Perfect. So now I should run on these matrix switches and let me check. I think we broke. Some. I'm pretty sure something got broke. matrix switches um run yeah this part damn it this is bad <laughs> So this filter object returned uh, returned the inventory object, but on inventory object you can't use run command. You can you, you can't use run task because you can use run only on your object. I didn't notice this before. <laughs> uh, let me double check the code. Um, 
so filter f no we need to check inventory and then filter returns new inventory after filtering the host by matching data past function okay we did that it returns an inventory which is fine but how do i run task now I see now okay I had to use filter function I had to use filter function directly on the um, normal object so when you do this it goes ahead and creates a new normal object and then takes the current inventory does filtering user using your arguments and keyboard arguments and assigns Nornier.inventory to whatever was returned here and then it returns back the Nornier object so yeah I see now uh, okay so basically this was my problem and now I can use a matrix which is dot run to run a task so the task that I'm going to run is going to be um, you know what I actually will pull up my docs um, executing tasks task uh, is equal to run blah 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 and then print result okay uh, maybe one day uh, on the Lantamer circus meetup can give us a crash course of Ansible or Nornier would be awesome most definitely maybe I, I can't promise because I, I don't have a lot of time but maybe um, okay so I have to I, I definitely need this function which is going to print result um, I will need to import my task for loading the YAML uh, so this is tasks data load YAML tasks add data well, I can say like this data and then data import YAML like this um, why it can't find it doesn't make any sense. Nornier plugins tasks data. Nor Nornier plugins tasks data. Load YAML. Oh! Right. Okay. It's a load YAML. Okay. So I can use this task. Now I have to consult the task parameters. So task parameters basically just accepts the file name it just accepts the file name mm, okay we will not be able to do it well or may maybe we will actually it will be fine no we will have to create a new task 
Uh, the reason why, because this file name, it, uh, it really depends on the uh, host name, which I can't access directly here when I do run. So I have to create a new task. So let's do dev a lot data and it takes task takes mm. task okay I will also need to import task from from Nornir core task in first task uh, and then well I don't need anything else really um, so this is just going to be a task and then I'm going to check out the example that was written by Patrick on Cisco DevNet. I'm pretty sure, he, uh, if I remember correctly, he had the example that is doing exactly all of this. So Patrick Ogenstadt, I think I pronounced his name correctly, I hope so. Um, and then DevNet, um, Nornir, yeah, this one. Except I can't load it. Oh, okay, it's it's fine. Uh, let me find it. Load data te task dot run task load yaml f task host. Oh, okay. Yeah, I forgot that I can reference task.host. Okay, so yeah, I have to follow the same principle here basically. So, task a load YAML file, blah, blah, blah. And then I assign variables the way I want to. Okay, uh, perfect. So this shouldn't be hard. So basically, okay, data is task dot run and then task will be load yaml and then um, file will be f task host so this will be inventory Hosts data uh, task host again I forgot some parameter <laughs> um, is it host yeah it's host okay no name I need name name okay so I need task host Host name uh, and then YAML, and that's pretty much it. So now I say task dot host um, another one I want to set some some variables at the root of the tree can I do that oh I, I should be able to do that so if I say data update yeah this should work update and I say data this should be fine and then I will 
task load data and I will break into the uh, debugger and I will check if those data is loaded. So let's walk through this again. Um, so I am filtering my metric switches by group. I run task called load data. Load data goes ahead and runs another task called load yaml is file name task.host.name and then task.host.data we are updating with the uh, with the data let's do host data host data like this okay so I, th I think this should work fine uh, so let's run this again okay this seems to work so now I, ha I have my matrix switches I have some concern though um, non-near inventory um, Hosts matrix one data. This is bad. I don't know why this doesn't work. My variables these variables were not loaded. Okay, hmm. there is one thing that I am really curious about. Um, when we are creating the sub inventory based on filter, are we referring to the same host object or not? This is very important because if they are different, then any changes to the like child child um, inventory will not be reflected on the main inventory, uh, which is not great. So let me check this by using so this is by using um, Python ID and if I now do the same thing on the main inventory okay it's also referred to the same host so any changes to underlying inventory will be reflected so this is fine now I'm curious why this didn't work out so well um, My YAML seems to be fine. Um, okay, let's do this. Uh, let's do matrix switches inventory hosts. Uh, let's do matrix four. And I will say data update and I pass some dictionary, you know, like uh, some dynamic key, some dynamic value. Okay, 
this work worked so now if I refer to the data object okay I can see this data now so this my method that I used here makes sense I think I know what is going on damn it uh, if you do print result and then rerun this task you'll actually see that it doesn't say anything um, result is equal to this result failed false so it, it didn't fail but still some something weird is going on I think I may need to do this access under uh, dot result okay let's run this again okay so again matrix switches inventory hosts um, data oh okay now this worked out fine perfect so yeah so I forgot the dot result um, so now this is fine so if you look on this I have my name I have groups nor near host but I also have these interfaces which got loaded directly from here this is exactly what I need it is using commented map uh, which is YAML feature I think I can mm, I think I can convert it to dict I don't remember um, let me check the documentation uh, Ruamel convert commented map to dict I don't need commented map, it, it makes it hard to read and I just don't need that. I need dictionary. But I don't remember how to convert con commented map to dictionary. I'm not sure you can do that.
This is painful. I don't need commented map, I want just Python dictionary. I think I know how I may do it, but I have never tried. So, so um, I was using building task load YAML, but I can just I can just change it. In fact, in fact, why am I using task at all? Like, I don't need task to load some data. Damn it. Um, yeah. I don't need task. I don't need anything here. I, and I don't need load YAML. And that stuff. I'm just going to import um, import YAML YAML. Now YAML is going to be YAML YAML YAML. Um, and I'm going to say save true. Oh no, uh, it's type save. Type save. Okay. So now I should be able to say. No, I actually still need task because I need to do this for a number of devices. Um, Let's do this for group. Mm, okay. Matrix switches will be an R inventory filter. Um, okay, so for host in group group dot hosts I guess um, yeah it should be hosts uh, we are going to say host data update this open file and now we specify the same thing Inventory host data host dot name YAML SF uh, YAML YAML is going to be YAML dot load F and host data update YAML. So, in our init near matrix switches, blah, blah, blah. And now we say a lot, lot data on matrix switches. I think this will work.
nor near core inventory uh, inventory object. Okay. Core. For every host in the inventory dot hosts, uh, we open we open the file loaded via YAML, save loader, and update host variables. And then we have breakpoint to analyze content, which should work out well. Found this Dmitry seems Python does only guarantee to keep the insertion order of dicks since three seven. I think third option default true would make sense. Setting it to false would then keep original order. So, uh, yes, kind of. Um, here's the thing. Um, you are correct that um, that dictionaries in Python in Python three seven are ordered. They they keep insertion order, and it's part of the spec. In three six, it is also true. It's just not part of the spec. So, uh, it's an implementation detail. Uh, so it shouldn't be relied upon. But I honestly rely on this in some of my code. Again, since. Because since 3.7 it became standard, I don't see any reason why I shouldn't use it in Python 3.6. Um, so, but thanks for, for the link. So I'm pretty sure this will work out fine. Well, I hope so. Uh, let's rerun the code. What is going on here? STR object has no attribute name. What is going on? Why host is a str object? actually doesn't make any sense to me. I will add it to section of s side notes. This is again some, something for me to, uh, in, uh, to investigate uh, later after the stream. So host, this is a string inventory. This is an inventory object, and inventory dot hosts. Oh, I'm an idiot. Uh, yeah, it should be values. Okay. Okay. Now, if I say Nornier dot inventory hosts and I say matrix one uh, I should be able to access the data which I can't so now in data I have my interfaces which is a list of dictionaries perfect this is exactly what I needed yeah who great um, If 
fact, I am thinking about some change. Which I am not sure is a great idea, but I am thinking about it anyway. Is since I'm not using Ansible anymore, I can have my data in any format I want. Uh, and I'm thinking if I should have this data actually as a key, and key will be in the interface name itself. I'm thinking if it should help with anything or not. Uh, it's kind of double edged double edged sword. Um, if we are accessing data programmatically, we will need to we will access it by interface name. If we are building configuration though, we actually don't need that. We need order. We need just interfaces in order and then these parameters we will be accessing like interface.name, interface.mod and so on and so forth. So I kind of don't 100%, I'm not 100% sure yet. I think we could try but it may be problematic though. So yeah, okay, I will keep it like this. So interfaces is just a list of um, dictionaries. Okay, let me see if there are any comments. Um, it, it was helpful. Thank you, Mentor Z. Um, okay. So we were able to load the data the way we want. I think um, this is good and we actually need to go ahead and continue with the next step of this which is now we have to take our well there are a couple of things that have to be done we need to load our data we will need to load our user data to deployments and lab templates to lab templates um, so we are, I'm going to probably create another function to do this not very hard next we have to take these two and use the plugin that I wrote for Ansible and convert it for like just pure Python basically uh, which is this we have to take this plugin and convert it to like just a Python function. And this Python fu function, based on this data, it will go ahead and change host attributes. Okay, so it will add something like um, interface mode, description, and so on and so forth. Um, That's a lot of code here. Mm, okay. I'm kind of like evaluating if I should write this from scratch or just copy paste and fix it so that it works. I'm thinking, yeah, I first I will have to just load the data. Uh, we will need topologies dictionary and deployment, well, and just current deployment basically. I also previously for Ansible I created this last run deployment thing, but it was kind of. I had to do it to make Ansible work though, so... Ok, 
Okay, I I will try. We'll see. Uh, I will need to split. Okay, and I have to access my main py. Okay, so hot lot data. Well. Let's do this update host virus. Okay. Now here we'll have load user data. And there are two things that we have to pass. Basically, actually we don't need to pass anything. Um I'm thinking, or maybe we actually should. We actually should pass the user data folder. Um, a user data directory. By default, it will be user data. Okay. And this will return two things. Uh, this will be a tuple of <sighs> mm. well, there will be two variables. One of them will be deployment, which will have, which will be dictionary. Damn it. Okay, we'll figure it out. Okay, so from typing import tuple. Uh, from typing extensions and I have to look up the exact syntax from my by extensions import type ticked and then this is uh, example Uh, so from mypy mypy extensions import typed dict uh, this will be deployment dict typed dict deployment dict and it's going to have name name which is going to be a string uh, it's going to have devices which is going to be a dictionary dictionary of string uh, dictionary of string ah. um, device pod dict will be typed dict device pod dict uh, this will be pod number which will be int and lab host name lab host name will be a str ok 
Okay. Type dict. Okay. Deployment dict is going to be. It's going to have a name. It's going to have a devices, which is a dictionary. Uh, where we have key is a device name and details is going to be device bot dict okay and then it's also going to have bots and bots is a list it's a list of a uh, specific dictionary this is Let's rename this mm. device deployment dict um. okay and this is going to be well deployment dict we also will have put deployment deployment dict is going to be the same thing And this one is going to have pot number as well and lab template, which is going to be str. Okay. So this is going to be a list of pot deployment dicts. Uh, If you will be using this.py for later uses, then probably good practice to rewrite code and convert and copy paste on the fly quicker indeed your common. I just expect it don't mind me. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I'm really like when I'm try when I'm coding it's I don't pay a lot of attention. Um which I definitely should learn how, but it will take time. Okay, I like my types here. They are representing this file pretty good. So my deployment dict is going to be basically the content of one of these files. Uh, so I can say that I'm going to return a tuple uh, with two things. This will be one of them will be dictionary of all the possible lab templates. I can name them topologies. Why do I need to have, why do I need to say, yeah, I will change this to topologies, topologies. Yes. And then now this lab template will be topology. Uh, then I also need to change it here. Lab, lab host name, lab template. Yeah, this will be topology. What number? Topology, lab host name. Okay, so topologies, dev, topology. Uh, I will need to load all of this stuff. I'm thinking also about the startup configs. Should I load them at like directly when I call this? I don't think I should, but it may be easier. No, I don't think I should. But it will be easier. <laughs> Damn it. Um, yeah, I think I can. I can just load all of these files. Um, so I need to load ev every config and I need to, to load this file which is topology yaml Okay, 
so topology dict. Uh, it's also going to be typed dict. Um, topology dict. This is going to be typed dict where I have where I have connections which is a list of two items mm. this is going to be connections and its list of two items list of lists where every item is lab host name port um, let's do link dict it's going to be also typed dict link dict uh, we are going to have lab host name str and we are going to have port which is also str uh, and I don't need total false anywhere for this task. Okay. So this will be lists, list of lists of linked dict. This will be my topology, and that's the only thing that is going to be in this dictionary. So that's it okay so I'm going to return a tuple where I say well I'm going to return topologies ah uh, no I'm going to return dictionary where I have topology name, str, and topology dict. And another item that is going to be returned is going to be a deployment dict. Okay. So this will be load user data. In fact, I can already move this load user data to just different file if I want to. It already becomes a little bit too much, but for now I will just leave it. Okay, so let's start with... We'll just do this, return non none. Um, I will also need to install a couple more things. Jorge Lopez 2K, thank you very much for following. Okay. By the way, you see that PyCharm is yelling at me already that it says, I expect a tuple of two dictionaries, but you're giving me some crap. Um, so, okay, I have to quit here and I have to install a couple more things. I have to install MyPy and I have to install MyPy extensions. In the, um, let me check. I have to also open another session or I can actually use this one okay I can use this one I also need to say source um, 
VN VN pin activate and I should be able to say my pi uh, nor near lab system and the only error it found by the way is on line 51 right here it says well you have your function here but you're returning non non but you said that you're going to return a tuple of diction of two dictionaries so what are you doing incompatible return type so good okay um uh so in fact i'm not sure why i have this i don't like this <laughs> I will do it differently. Let's say load current current deployment user data tier user data. Yeah, let's no, let's do deployment user data dear and we also need to have deployment well we can just say name and str which will not have any default value okay and this is going to return deployment dict Now we will also have our dev load topologies name. No, we don't need name, we just need a folder. User data tier str is user data, and this is going to return dictionary of string uh, as a key and topology dict as a value. Pass. Okay. This is much better. Uh, so here we will we'll say deployment is equal to load current deployment, uh, and we will provide the name of current deployment, which will be let's say two two mixed mixed and. We will say topologies is will be just lot topologies user data dear uh, user data dear we can also specify it as a constant for example um, yeah let's just leave it like this for now okay so load current deployment and load topology so we will have to populate these two things um, current deployments will be easy so we will have to say we will need our pass loop module um, from pass leap import pass what current deployment? This is going to be simple. This is going to be user data dear. No. Uh, pass will be pass dot user data dear. Um, then uh, pass deployments. I think I can say like this deployments. Uh, and then F name name um, dot YAML. Like 
this uh, unresolved reference what is going on here I don't see the problem Now we say this open pass as f uh, deployment. Well, we can just return deployment. We can s we need to s to use cast function because um, well I will do it without cast first and I will show you show you to you the problem. So we will say yaml load f. And that's pretty much it. Uh, if I do this, though, uh, my pie will yell at me. S it will not yell at me. Why it will not yell at me? You have to yell at me. Oh, okay. Let's do this deployment, deployment um, name. So this should yell at me. And this doesn't yell at me either. This doesn't make sense. Okay, maybe, maybe I missed something, I don't know. Um, I'm curious how how did it figure out that this name is fine because this is not is there any let me do this name too invalid syntax uh, oh okay look at this this is this is great so here I said print deployment name to you know this was the wrong key and because I specified here this type it told me no 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 you are accessing the uh, the object that doesn't have this key and this was not at the runtime this was a static analysis check just based on this dictionary that I defined here um, wow that's pretty awesome actually you I think before you had to do cast and then cast this dictionary as deployment dictionary but in this case I was surprised that it, I didn't need to convert the types so that's pretty cool um, okay so I can print deployment name for example with topologies it will be a little bit harder I will have to go do recursive check well, recursive load through every folder and I always forget how to do OS, uh, OS walk in Python so I will hope I will find some reference a path sleep alternative to OS walk Interesting, I haven't seen this path. Now this seems pretty old, so I guess um, I guess Oswalk was already replaced with Oskandir, but I'm still asking about something else. I thought the pass leap, the pass leap has alternative to Oswalk.
Okay, for now I will just run this code to see that load current deployment will work. Didn't work out so well. Uh, <laughs> Look uh, using debugger deployment. Oh, okay. Yeah. This was my problem. Okay, so now I can actually run this just fine. So wanted to change this to topology. Okay. Lot topologies. Okay, we will need to use OS walk. As I told you, I always forget how to do this uh, because we will have to go through directory of uh, user data topologies and basically um, go through every every directory there, uh, write down the directory name, and then. and then load topology.yaml. Uh, I think I did partially this in Vars plugin in Ansible, so I'm going to just do this there. And actually, you see, it's pretty much the same thing. So I'm going to almost copy-paste this. This will have to be changed a little bit or spoke. Yeah, I will need import import os. This uh, we will have to change this. Uh, we will need to do this path. User data user data slash topologies this will be our root so topologies okay return topologies okay this says if this is a dic uh, this is a directory. I think uh, pass lib is dir. The pass is dir. Okay, so I can say if topology is dir. Apologies, dear. Yes, dear. For directory pass of dear's files in OSWOC, topologies dear. For file name in files, base file name extension.
for every file base file name and extension using ospa split uh, split uh, ext if uh, the file is called topology and uh, extension extension in yaml file name extensions then full pass is going to be ospas join dear pass file name okay dear pass file name dear name is going to be ospas base name ospars dear name full pass And then we need to say this open full pass as if YAML load F. This will be topologies. your name okay that's pretty much it um, almost okay let's see This POSIX pass has no attribute is dear. Uh, I think it's underscore. Okay. It worked. Almost. So the first part worked out well. The second one didn't. Um, let me see. Dear pass and uh, file name. Yeah. User data topology is mixed. File name topology YAML. Okay. I have a suspicion that OSPA split AEXT it may have dot yeah damn it okay this should work Perfect. So, um, well, almost. Uh, I want to have this pretty print or JSON print. Let's do JSON print. Um, So I have my my deployment and now I have my different topologies where I have connections which is a list of the things list okay something I don't like here as well it's a list oh well yes there is some problem here I guess Oh no, 
I think Connections is a big list where I have. Well, no, it's correct. It's a big list where there is a list of two dictionaries. Okay, no, this, this is fine. This is fine. Okay, so we loaded this data uh, the way we wanted to. So now uh, the next thing would be to actually modify our variables. Um, similar way like this action plugin is doing directly for our I think it's doing it for matrix switches but I don't recall it's quite a lot of co code here I'm pretty sure I'm going to copy paste and then start doing start fixing errors but So you will leave uh, everything right now in a single file, but then if um, there will be a need, then we will move to uh, to several files. For now, I mean it's quite already becoming big, but let's leave it like this. Um, I don't want to do premature optimizations. So this is, let me think how we are going to name this function. This function is going to update variables based on the topologies and current deployments. It is going to update, okay, it's going to update matrix. I don't yet know what it's going to actually do, but for now we will just just copy paste everything. Okay, so I'm thinking what kind of variables we will need. We will definitely need access to we will need access to our current inventory. Uh, we need to know everything about the inventory. So I'm going to just pass the inventory. Uh, in fact, we can, no, we will just leave inventory. Um, we will need all topologies as well and current deployment and deployment. Um, deployment is going to be deployment dict. Topologies is going to be topologies. No, it's going to be dict str topology dict, and inventory is going to be inventory object. And it's just going to update variables so it doesn't return anything. Uh, we don't need result ansible facts anymore. Um, hmm. 
I also don't think we need this. Uh, let me see where we access. Devices, devices, devices. We access it at the very end. No, we don't need these devices, devices anywhere. Um, I'm not even sure we need it at all, but okay, let's just go go through the code. Okay, so we have device host name in the inventory, lab host name and pod number. We have lab host name and pod number for every device. Okay, uh, and we would like to have a mapping where we say if you give me this and this argument i'm going to give you this device host name and pod number to device um yeah i think this will work so what are we actually doing here we are going to refer to the device object We are going to access deployment devices items uh, where we will have device and device dict. So pod number will be this object, uh, and I don't like device dict. We will have device info, device info, and then we will say host name and pod number to the device. It's going to be lab host name pod number. Okay, uh, I like this. So this is the next thing we are going to do. We don't need this anymore. We don't need this anymore. We are going to say we are going to say that we are running the task load update matrix where we pass the whole uh, Nornier inventory uh, as well as topologies and deployment okay so first we get this mapping Now that I think about it, I'm thinking maybe it makes sense to do this parsing while we are reading the file somewhere here. Like, actually this makes a lot of sense. Okay, I think for now I will just leave it like this, but then later I can always go ahead and change this. Okay, so we, we got this mapping. Uh, we will actually need to say that um, this is going to be tuple of uh, str, str and int mapped to str. Okay, so blah blah blah. Okay, we got this right. So now so the second part is we need to go ahead for and for every matrix switch for every matrix switch we need to get the we need to get the uh, variables of of that switch um, This will be done a little bit differently. This is going to be inventory, uh, inventory groups, 
and then we are referring to matrix switch and I think the function is called children so for matrix switch in children and this is going to be let me actually go ahead and I uh, check the code core I think it's in an in inventory or yeah it should be here so group object has function children and this is going to be actually a dictionary a dictionary where we have a name will it will have a name mapped to the uh the the hosts the host object uh we need only host object itself i don't care about the name of the device i think so um i may be wrong but we'll see okay so this children is going to return matrix switch name and matrix switch wires yeah i don't really need it i would just say values so i'm going to just have matrix switch um this is not needed um now we'll say for port number in interface name enumerate matrix switch wires Okay, so what we are trying to do here is that based on these variables, I would like to make as, as this kind of mapping where uh, where I map the real device and its real port to uh, where it's located on the matrix and the basically interface number okay this kind of makes sense uh, so this will be for matrix switch dot uh, data well actually we can just access interfaces matrix switch interfaces uh, or I can say get interfaces and then uh, like empty empty list for example uh, if interface get mode is dot one q tunnel if connected device not in interface raise an error which was a ansible action we are going to raise just a value error value error interface interface name and here we are going to use f string so f string what I also don't like is that I, it kind of it's it's very deep in the for loop but <sighs> interface name on the switch switch name where I, where I have switch name matrix switch shadows matrix switch from outer scope uh, no it should be fine for matrix switch in inventory groups matrix switches children port number okay is interface 
some interface name on the switch matrix switch name is dot one q tunnel but doesn't have connected interface variable okay a uh, connected device uh, is interface okay this part should be pretty much the same okay now this part is going to be different this is matrix switch yeah this will be matrix switch to name um, current dot one q tunnel vlan okay we need to access a variable dot one q tunnel vlan start uh, this variable belongs to groups i think to matrix switches groups uh, so this will be inventory groups matrix switches um, in fact I'm going to do the following I'm going to say matrix switches is matrix or matrix switches group let's say matrix switches group okay and then now I should be able to access this variable. Current dot one dot one q tunnel VLAN. Okay. Okay, we kinda finished this block. So after this we are going to have this mapping. The next one is we have to access the deployment pods right here. So for pod in um, deployment pods pod number blah 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 okay it's quite big loop for connection in task virus I have to rename this variable. This will be topology. Topology. And this will be topologies. For connection in topologies, topology connections. I'm going to say Oh, and topology, this is also wrong, because this should be topology. For connection in topology connections, for connection and lab host name is going to be lab host name, port is going to be port. Now we are accessing the port from, well, we are accessing what device we are going to use. based on the port okay port device wars is going to be <sighs> okay um this will be inventory hosts and then um, device well pod I can just call this pod device pod device okay if pod device if pod device get lab host name is not equal to lab host name and pod device get pod number not is equal to pod number uh, we will raise a value error 
and this is very big big message here trying to assign a variable okay Trying to assign lab host name target pod number is pod number current lab host name but this device has already lab host name but this device already has lab host name and this lab host name is going to be put device dot name put device name and put number put device get put number I guess Well, I think this is, is going to work out fine. So we are updating here some variables. This part, this code block looks fine to me. I hope so. Now matrix switch name, matrix switch port number is going to be device port to matrix port group, device and port. I, I wrote this code like three months back and I right now don't remember anything. <laughs> uh, okay, so matrix switch wars. We have to access the matrix switch itself. My hosts matrix switch name is 
if access VLAN and matrix interface raise value error. Uh, again, the same thing. Matrix switch name already has VLAN assigned to the interface uh, matrix matrix interface dot name okay okay alternatively if you are trying to get if it's not dot on Q tunnel we are raising an error here saying that going to be matrix switch to name has mod matrix interface okay instead of dot on Q tunnel okay matrix This looks good. Okay. Okay, there is some problem because this thing yells at me. Uh, so this is fine. This is fine mode oh okay I see it now okay alternatively we are assigning all the scrap shut down we'll say actually We'll say shut down false. This was Ansible naming, but right now I can change to whatever I want um, if it makes sense. State. work okay we are guys uh, already streaming for more than three hours so I'm going to finish this part actually this is the main part I'm I'm not going to show you like the whole thing you'll have a demo next time um, probably it's beginning of the stream uh, of the stream so there is obviously some work to be done after this part is finished but there is not much so basically what has to be done is that i have to copy paste my ginger templates uh, and adjust them just a little bit to be able to access all these new at uh, attributes that i had generate a whole config file based on the template and upload it using netmiko napalm whatever i want um okay so for today we are going to finish at least with this function do some very basic troubleshooting if something doesn't work and then wrap up so maybe i think like 10 more minutes um okay matrix description connected to port device device lab host name 
Now post new input number. Okay. It's actually good. Matrix switch wires, updated wires is interfaces. I don't remember what I'm doing with updated wires and if it makes any sense to have those updated wires. I actually don't think it makes any sense. Um, no, I don't think it makes any sense for for updated wires. And then we add uh, VLAN numbers so that yep. And but for the next spot we are starting start, starting VLAN visible by ten. Okay, this is a function that was already done. Uh, this one we already had matrix switches group, I think. Matrix switches group. For matrix switch in matrix switch group our children uh, values matrix switch wires uh, no we don't need that matrix switch interfaces if matrix switch interface vlan is none blah 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 okay devices device Okay, so this is a part where I'm actually updating something. I don't think I have to do this though, uh, since I'm updating directly in the uh, in the host wires. I don't need this at all. Um, This part though is bothering me for pod device in uh, I don't think I need this actually. I think that's it. Pretty sure it will not work but on the first attempt, but who cares? Um, thank you very much, Mentor Z, for for kind words and for uh, being on the stream with me today. Really appreciate it. Have a great weekend. Okay, so um, we are very close. Wow, it worked without crushing. Can you imagine this? I did all of these changes basically, you know, like just in code. Wow. I will be even more surprised if this actually works without anything. It actually worked. Look at this, guys. So I'm accessing matrix one. Okay. If you look on the matrix one variables, okay, the only thing that this uh, this um, device has when it it is loaded is okay on this port. I am connected to router one. Okay. On that port, I am connected to router two. Uh, and so on and so forth. Actually, in this case, it's connected with three links 
with four links to R1, okay? Now, we had this deployment and we had topology, okay? Based on, and we selected topology, I don't remember, let me check. We selected topology, which was two underscore mixed, which was this topology. In this topology, if you look closely, we are using actually every single device, every single switch and router. If you look on matrix one, and in this topology, um, in this topology, we will need to connect the connection will be something like uh, like this so from our router one to switch one from uh, router two to switch one from switch one to switch two from switch two to r two to from switch two to r one so think about this from matrix perspective you will need a tunnel we will need a tunnel for router one to switch one we'll need a tunnel from switch one to router two and we need a tunnel from switch one to switch two so we will basically need three tunnels okay so we will need one link going to router one and three links going to uh, switch one from for matrix one now look on the variables that i am i assigned so if I'm looking on the matrix one data on interfaces, and this is a list of dictionaries, it says, well, um, this first port is actually shut down. This second port, I'm assigning VLAN 2000, okay, to the port one one. It's going to be Q and Q tunnel. And I also assigned a description saying that this particular port is connected to um, E11 of router one, which is going to have a lab host name as JBR1, and it will be in port 100. And this was done dynamically, okay? We also, we also do uh, shutdown false so that it will be actual lab. Then we assign a new VLAN. We assign a new VLAN 2000. And we are doing the same thing. It says it's connected to switch one. This particular port, actually, what did they do? Oh, actually, it is fine. So if I scroll this, remember that we had a connection one of the connections was between r1 and switch one so there will be one port in in the same vlan as another port because we need them connected okay so this is based on this vlan so this one is connected to switch one it's connected to switch one lab host name will be this it is in the same port and it's also shut down false now we also have some other connections. Uh, we have connection, for example, um, this is actually not correct. I'm thinking if it's correct or not. Um, this is some other tunnel, but I don't remember. Oh, actually, yeah, it's correct. Uh, because there is connection from router 1 to switch 1 and there is connection from router 1 to switch 2 so this one is connected to blah 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 so this is another port and the way I can verify this if I am going to matrix 2 and I will look on its data there should be one port with the same VLAN 2001 okay so let's actually do this uh, let's actually do matrix 2 and here i should be able to find one here it is there is an one 
uh, port with the same VLAN 2001, which connects to switch 2, okay? It's in the same port. So basically, the same VLAN was assigned for one of the ports here to router 1 and one of the ports here to a switch 2. And using this, using these variables, now you can just go ahead and generate your template config using Jinja. And you will get these tunnels configured. So I think this is a good point to wrap up. I think we are streaming for 3 hours 20 minutes, quite long. Also need to get some food. So uh, honestly, let, let's just do a quick summary. So. We migrated the most part from of this project from Ansible to Nornir. We don't have yet like an actual like result that you know we can just show and everything is fancy and blah blah blah. But we are very close. The only thing that is uh, um, left to do. Let me first tell you what we have done. First, we converted the uh, we converted the inventory which was in ansible format to inventory to simple inventory format supported by nornier we also found some bug where uh, we couldn't read the ansible inventory which uh, which is supposed to be working so i have to investigate that and maybe you know contribute code or something like this uh, we just uh, not to waste time on the stream we converted the whole thing to simple inventory which uh, is similar, but just a little bit different format. Um, this was the first thing that we did. Second, we uh, basically started writing this main pi file. Uh, and there were a couple of things. First, we had to update host variables using uh, the host name in the host data directory. It was pretty straightforward. Second, we had to load deployment folder and the current deployment which you specify in the code. We specify two underscore mixed. Ideally, we would uh, move this to arc bar so you can specify this on common line and say, well, give me, um, I would like to use deployment two underscore mixed, for example, okay? So we load that YAML file two underscore mixed and, you know, and it was in specific format. Lastly, we load, uh, load topologies, which went ahead through topologies folder for, for every single directory and loaded the topology YAML, which contains details about the topology. Next, we were converting the um, action plugin from Ansible that I wrote before uh, to just simple Python code accessing Nornier inventory. This one is doing the whole magic. It basically evaluates every single um, port that is connected on matrix, every single uh, topology that is available, and the current deployment is uh, with basically mappings. So we did that and assigned a new QNQ VLANs for every appropriate port on the matrix switch. This is what we did. Um, and at the very end, we updated these variables and they are present in the host object uh, that, uh, that is uh, part of the Nornier inventory. So this is what we did. The part that is left to do is um, I have to copy paste my uh, Jinja templates from here, that I just do. I need to copy paste them, uh, update them just a little bit um, and um and then just uh generate the whole config file which you are going to push either using netmiko send command set uh plugin which is available where it is available and uh, so the one of the plugins is called uh napalm uh send config send config this one or the napalm Napalm configure, you can use either one of those to push config to the uh, to the matrix switch, and then well not uh, yeah to the matrix switch and then bam you have your tunnel 
already available, um, as many tunnels as needed per topology. Uh, let me see if there are any questions. I don't see any. Uh, so I would like to thank you very much, guys, for uh, for being with me here today. I hope you learned something new. Um, join Network to Code Slack. Uh, there is a Narnia channel there. Um, and um, I work closely right now with David and Kirk on, make, on contributing the code. Uh, they are amazing people uh, and it's actually really fun to to work with them so come join us if you have any questions let me know contact me by either by slack or twitter um and and i think there is a, is there a comment or question let me let me check it out so thanks for sharing the knowledge are you going to have any stream related to in the so in coming weeks writing a network element driver adding netconf and netconf has an mp devices uh thank you for the question net, net process i uh, I'm considering it. Most likely, yes. I just haven't selected the proper week. Most likely, it's going to be either in one or two weeks. But definitely, uh, we already had two NSO streams, but there is so much more to cover. So I fully agree with you that uh, we need to have another NSO stream. At least there are things that, uh, that I would like to cover is adding netcon device this is definitely on my radar a radar and another thing is writing the service uh, writing the service uh, using uh, and NSO. Um, I don't think I'm going to write network element driver um, I don't think it's like a good good idea um, but definitely adding netcon device as well as adding um, adding NSO service is definitely something that I would like to do. Um, thank you very much for the question. Okay, guys, um, again, thank you very much. Uh, keep engaging. Um, let me know what you think about the streams, what topics you would like me to cover. Um, and yeah, let's continue conversation um, of the stream. Thank you very much. I wish you um, an easy working week and enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Until next time, thank you, bye.